I'm sorry, noob noob, but we've cut your contract. Miss, I need contracts for monies. So this could be the end of Marvel as we know it. They're shutting down. They might just have to shut it down. Firing everybody. Yes. Hiring all women. All of them. <laughs> Female Hulk. Female Wolverine. Brie Lar they're just going to clone Brie Larson. It's all Brie Larson's. Yeah. 12 contract movies for Brie Larson. Yes. So this news may have slipped under the radar, but we think it's important because the foundation of Marvel was built on this. So you have an amazing 20 film what legacy that you want to protect and now Kevin Feige is deciding to change his tactics and he's not making actors they're not being locked into multi-picture deals so I guess it varies depending on who like there's a good side and a bad side to this so let's explore it a little bit we're going to Collider here and they're saying that the expansive contracts may no longer be the norm yeah, was it Samuel Jackson at a seven? Nine. Movie? Nine? Oh, Jesus. Nine movie deal. Brie Larson had, what, six or something like that? Or? We'll look at Chris Evans was initially locked in for six as Captain America. Sebastian Stan was signed up for seven when he agreed to play the Winter Soldier. And I'm pretty sure Seb Sebastian Stan, Stan was like a nobody. Chris Evans was like, he wasn't Captain America. You know what I mean? Like, he was not who he is now. Like, he wasn't the A-lister that he was then. Yeah. Because he had already been in a handful of movies that never really went in. You know, he was in he was the, the Fantastic Human Torch, Four. Yeah. I was going to say. Yeah, but did that That was not exactly a great movie. Not nest. No, I mean, he wasn't A-list. He was like B-list. Yeah, and Tom Holland, was, who was a nobody, was contracted for three standalone Spider-Man movie movies. Brie and Larson then was seven pictures. Seven pictures. They've only done two and they're already regretting it. <laughs> yeah, the Marvels will be her third. Oof. Yeah. But now what he's saying, he's like, um, you know, that got a lot of attention back way back when, when uh, with I think Scarlett and Chris Hemsworth and Evans and Sam Jackson. It varies now. It varies project to project, cast to cast. Really, what we want are people that come in, are excited to be in the universe, and are excited at the opportunity to do more things, as opposed to being locked into contractual obligations. And even Elizabeth Olsen, who recently just did WandaVision, says that she's only been contracted for two cameos in a supporting role. So it seems strange that this is the new path. Yeah, I mean, you're not gonna, you're, I don't know, you're not gonna get big stars, because big stars are gonna want to be locked into multi-movie contracts, because then they can't do shit. Yeah, then they can't do other stuff, and so they're gonna be obligated to do this. You're banking on trying to find unknown talent and hoping they work out, but they work out because of the movies, so that must mean that phase four is gonna be garbage that needs to be headlined by big stars. I think he's taking a chance on the fact that he's looking, maybe he's looking at DC and he sees, you know, The Rock doing Black Adam for like two movies and he sees uh, some of the other people as the, as the interchangeable parts. You know, Ben Affleck was tied up for a while, but now they let him go and he's, he's not doing what he was doing before. There's another article on Screen Crush, which is also talks about this. And it just seems, you know, they did say that he, re you know, Chris Evans renegotiated his deal, but the point is, is that you get young talent or somebody like Samuel L. Jackson to anchor nine movies, and then you can push your 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 idea forward. I suspected that he was going to sign a bunch of you know younger talent to take over these movies, like a new like the girl who would play Ironheart, Lawrence Pugh. Yeah, exactly. That's a good one. So Florence Pugh, who's, you know, we would think would take over as Black Widow, she would sign to a long contract because 
you know, they, they kill off the original Black Widow and now they have someone to replace her and she's younger and they can put her, she's not really A-list, they can pay less money for her, which means that the movies will cost less money. They will, they can stop paying Robert Downey Jr. a billion dollars every time he appears in anything. Uh, they got, like we said, they got Tom Holland real young. Or maybe the new Miss Marvel who they, they signed, maybe she would be in a bunch of movies. So you would take all these young characters and then build them into like the West Coast Avengers or something like that. Or think about it, like they reboot the X-Men. Wouldn't you want to get a new fresh actor for Wolverine and Gambit and Rogue? Keanu Reeves, Wolverine. For one movie. And then he's like, yo, I got to do 28 more John Wicks. Yeah, that's, I mean, you basically, you're running there. It's like a sports analogy. You're basically, instead of drafting players, you're just signing good players in free agency. That's not sustainable. Yeah, it doesn't work in sports. And why would it work in Hollywood? And you don't have, it gives you less flexibility, at least financially, right? Isn't that the reason why sports, that why like they sign quarterbacks to these huge contracts over many, many years so well, that they have more flexibility? I mean, sports have caps. Disney doesn't have caps. Disney just makes all that money from converting children. <laughs> but then what are you going to do? It just, it doesn't seem to make a ton of sense. And I get that, you know, look, you may want, um, yeah, but like if you may want somebody like a Keanu Reeves and maybe he only wants to do one or two movies, but then you don't, the whole reason why the MCU was so sustainable. Continuity. Yeah. People really enjoyed the continuity of all these characters interacting over a long period of time. Maybe he has so little faith in Phase 4 that he's just like, yeah, we're not really going to do the X-Men because the only thing that seems to be on the table is Fantastic Four. Blade. Yeah. Whenever that comes out. Yeah, but how many movies can they really make out of Blade? True. He's going to be 60 years old before Blade 1 comes out, so. Yeah. It just seems like they don't really have a plan and that he's waiting to reboot everything so that he can have a plan maybe when he makes a new X-Men and builds a foundation off that because, you know, I mean, in reality, the Avengers were like D to C level characters and the X-Men and Spider-Man were really the A level characters. And, you know, by, I don't know, Tom Holland can keep playing Tom Holland's version of Spider-Man for a couple more years and he still has a, at least one more movie contracted in him. So I don't know, it just seems like it's a bad idea they should have just gave angelina jolie a 10 movie contract for the eternals <laughs> so they can make 10 eternals movies and then have her headline all of marvel for the end of time i mean that's what it seems like because there's no way the eternals is gonna be good no there was another trailer and well no it was the same trailer just on a bigger screen I'm like it doesn't look any better on a bigger screen <laughs> it does not look any it looks better equally stupid should you sign any of those people to 10 year like t- 10 Hell movie contracts no. absolutely not that movie's gonna bomb uh, it should, whether it does or not, because people just want to go to the movies. Uh, I knows. don't know, man. There's no way it makes as much. And you have to remember when they were making the MCU, you know, the first mo- couple movies were, you know, Iron Man made like 400 million. Yeah, they didn't, like, they didn't, they didn't blow make, up the box office. Yeah, they were g- very they were good. Respectable. Well, and that's part of it is the MCU made the billion dollar tent pole other than Star Wars and Star Wars will never pull that off ever again because the fans have wised up and they're never going to pay to see the trash that Star Wars is putting out. But the MCU still has some credibility here and they're still doing things for that now. for now that I think people will respect and they'll keep looking at. You know, if you go any further, you're talking about like, I don't know. I think Kevin Feige's putting like a pause until he decides what he wants to do with the next phase or if he even wants to continue uh, with Disney, you know? Yeah, I, I don't I don't really have high hopes for phase four, but maybe phase, phase four five? so far seems like it sucks. Maybe phase five will be good. Who knows? If they I don't know. Are they even to do phases anymore? Are we phased out? I don't know. We're marveled out. Let's go to DC. Let's fuck it. DC. Batman Forever. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you heard the latest about the new Flash movie, but I it's think it's all about Supergirl. Super flashy. It's so flashy. He's flashing Supergirl the entire movie. The whole movie. Yeah. Nonstop. Sexually assaulting her left and right. Oh, my God. Well... Make sure that you catch our live stream of our full-length podcast, which you can catch on Fridays at 7.30 Eastern Standard Time, 7.30 p.m. for all y'alls on the Eastern Standard Coast 
whatever that is. On you West Coasters, it's like 4.30. I don't know. You're just probably still working if you, you know, are into that. Then. Yeah. And if you want to take that like button, maybe slip it a roofie, get it all tipsy, and then smash it hard like Cosby did in the 80s, we'd really appreciate it. Don't forget the... Oh, also subscribe. That yes. helps. That helps as well. But smash us too. Smash both of those buttons. Smash us either way. So hard. Yeah. Just smash it. Anyway, from all of us here at Our Reviews Will Kill You to all of y'all at home, we love y'all and on to the next one. Ah.